Let us just take this moment to settle in together. I'll tell you, and then I'll pray on this too. I'm, hi- I'm hiding over in the corner, and I'm wearing my mask today because I have no symptoms and I'm fine, but I hung out with my sister-in-law on Friday. It was her birthday, and then she tested positive on Saturday. So I, I'm following all the CDC and then add a little extra. So I'm staying away from y'all and wearing my mask and all that stuff. So any, And I even have my own microphone today. Nobody's sharing a microphone with me. So, all right, let's uh, take this time to connect in spirit. Uh, I invite you to get into whatever your comfortable prayer position is. Turn your attention into your breath. Not breathing on purpose, but simply paying attention to the smooth in and out. Recognizing that we are living in these incredible complex bodies that do so many things that we are all very grateful that we don't have to know how to do all of them for our bodies to exist and for us to get to enjoy the lives that we enjoy in them. Ah. We are grateful for this day, for this place, for this church, for all these beautiful, amazing people who have joined together in person and virtually. We give thanks by just finding something to say thank you for that feels the most genuine to us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. No matter where you come from, no matter where you're going, here's a place where you can take Comfort in the knowing that if you come to stay a while or just passing through, this door is open to you. Come and let's be silent. Come and share a hug. Come, let's pray together. Come, love and be loved. From the blissed out to the turned out, from the pampered to the abused, this door is open to you. Come on in, come on in. The God in us recognizes the God in you. Whether you're black or white, gay or straight, Christian, Buddhist or Jew, this door. to repeat after me. If you're watching us virtually, please type this in the comments. Everyone look around at your neighbors and repeat after me. Good morning. morning. I love you this morning. morning. And I sure do appreciate you being here. here. To our virtual church family, know that we are saying this to you as well. Help us grow this loving community by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to our pages. And now please join me in reading our June affirmations. They will come up on the, yeah, they're up on the screen. I use the powerful capacity of my imagination to picture what can be. I am a catalyst for good in my life. 
And now our unity reading is, a, is the mastermind prayer. So we can say this together. I surrender. I admit that of myself I am powerless to solve my problems, powerless to improve my life. I need help. Two, I believe. I believe that a power greater than myself, God, the one presence and one power active in the universe, can change my life. I am ready to be changed. I realize that erroneous, self-defeating thinking is the cause of my problems, unhappiness, fears, and failures. I decide to be changed. I make a decision to surrender my will and my life to the divine creator. I am willing to be changed at depth. I am willing to place my life under the direction of God and to remain open to divine will. I understand and I forgive. I understand that self-empowering thoughts and courageous actions prosper me now. I now forgive myself and all others for all real and imagined mistakes and shortcomings. I ask believing in the awareness of my oneness with God. I ask believing that my heart's desire is fulfilled now. I state my specific request knowing that God is fulfilling my needs. I claim, I claim my heart's desire and affirm that I am now demonstrating it in my life. I give thanks. I give thanks that God is now responding to my needs and I joy, joyously assume the very feelings of my heart's desires fulfilled. I dedicate my life. I now have a covenant in which it is agreed that I am supplied with an abundance of all things necessary to live a successful and joyous life. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God, to live in a manner that sets the highest example for others to follow, and to remain responsive to God's guidance. I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, gratitude, and expectancy. I am at peace. I am content. Amen. We'll bring forward our prayer box, please. Our honorary prayer chaplain. So I am your prayer chaplain today. And so no matter what you may be going through or growing through, our prayer chaplain team wants to pray with you about it. To be included on our prayer list, you can fill out a form and put it in the prayer box before or after service, or you can pick up the prayer request button, touch the prayer request button on our website. So we know that prayer works, right? Yes, yes we know that. So let's pray together. <sighs> dear, dear spirit, we know that you are without limits. So from this place of truth, this realization of our innate oneness with you, Source, this recognition that you are the very life in which we live, from this place, we hold the intention of wholeness for ourselves, our loved ones, our city, our state, our country, our world. And so we also hold this for all the specific prayer, prayer requests on our prayer list and in our prayer box today, and for any others whom you may also be holding in your heart. We send special blessings of healing and peace to Shirley White, 
the families of Robb Elementary School in Texas. Donis Kravik, Herbert Bird, Chip Roth, Richard Hyatt and family, Kathleen Strickland, Nancy Catequit Eduardo, Itata Selassie, Barbara Slat, Ukraine, and Russia. Together, let us affirm that these loved ones are whole, perfect, and complete. May each of them experience the joy of their oneness with you. And may that joy so fill each of their lives that they see and know only wholeness. We too are filled with deep gratitude for that God presence within us, knowing that at all moments, in every place, that presence is with us, in us, as us. And we are truly blessed. May we feel deep within our souls peace and goodwill towards all people and all situations in the sure knowledge that with God all is well. And so it is. And as we're in this place of prayer, I invite you to think of one of the people named or one of your loved ones that you want to give extra care and love to today and just imagine them wrapped in the nice warm pink glow of love fully protected and as you think of that I then invite you to pay attention to what that thought of love wrapping someone feels like in your own body while you think about it. Now I invite you to turn your full attention to that love within yourself. Feel it radiating from your head to your toe, right out of your head, all the way up into infinity and just pouring out of you, never running out because there is an, an abundant, ever-flowing amount. And it is not something that simply resides within you. It is a part of who you are. You are loved because you have love. You are loved because you are love hmm. I invite you to turn your attention back to just thinking about how that feels in your body and just sit with that for a moment You are powerful, spiritual beings having a human experience. I invite you to say to yourself as I reword this in an affirmation, I am a powerful being. I am a powerful spiritual being having a human experience. And so it is. And amen. So yes, we have some announcements, but uh, first, if you are a first-time visitor or haven't been here in a long time, you should have received a welcome bag when you walked in. 
Uh, if you did, fill out the visitor connection card and give to an usher so that we may stay connected. If you haven't received a, a bag, please raise your hand and an usher will bring you a gift bag. And I see there's one coming. All right, so uh, upcoming events, we have uh, Meditation by the Ocean with Anita Shaver. June 15th, that's 6.30, I love this, a mental trip to the beach yes. to meditate. If you can't be there physically, that's the next best thing, right? Uh, where do you put your focus with Joyce Hollifield? Wednesday, June 22nd at 6.30. This is a Zoom only. Um, yeah, yours is, uh, Anita's is Zoom only as well. Okay, so this is Zoom only. June 22nd, 630, come ready to discover words you have been taught and have expressed with strong emotion that keep you blind to what you truly feel or desire and leave you feeling discouraged and defeated. This is an inquiry and a time to practice using words in a new positive way. Mark your calendars for our homecoming church at the park. This will be the last Sunday of June. We're planning to have a church potluck picnic, or potluck meal, excuse me, drumming, games, and a, even a jewelry making class. We have uh, Gay with God with Reverend Wally White, Monday, June 27th at 6.30. This is an in-person meeting. First floor parlor, I think, is across, uh, behind the back door here, straight across the hall. It's a safe place for, or a safe space for members of the LGBT plus community and our allies to discuss how and where we find our comfortable relationship with church and God. EFT tapping. I didn't know what that was. I had to look that up. That is emotional freedom techniques. So EFT tapping with Ellie McFalls. Breaking Through the Fear of Failure and Fear of Success, Wednesday, June 29th at 6.30. That is Zoom only as well. Um, and then, of course, there are sign-up sheets in the back where Kathy is sitting for all of our Wednesday nights at the door. Everything I mentioned is a Wednesday night, is that correct? Or? Yes. Except for and you had... That's right, that's right. That's on a Monday. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, yes. I spoke with Bill ahead of time to just say, I, my class this next week is canceled or postponed because I'm going to be gone. So it was set up in the, in the regular time, but some people haven't noticed that, I'm afraid. So I wanted to make sure that no one shows up this Tuesday because I'm going to be in South Carolina taking a mediation training. So I'm excited about that, and we'll pick the class back up on Tuesday, the next Tuesday, which I think is the 20th. Thanks. Thanks, Charlotte. And now I'd like to introduce our musician for the day, Lynn Kuntz. Did I pronounce that right? Okay. She's a singer, songwriter, and instrumentalist. Mixes, she mixes the sounds of folk and pop with a hint of blues to make music you'll remember. With her guitar or piano, you don't play both at the same time, do you? <laughs> As a backdrop, her voice is both powerful and comforting, and her award-winning songs follow suit. For Lynn, a song is a conversation, and she writes lyrics that bring down your guard and raise your spirits. Her own truth shines through every line she sings, and everyone can see themselves in her light. Whether she's on, on a backyard stage for a good cause or sharing the spotlight with the Indigo Girls, you get the same Lynn every time, open-hearted, adventurous, and real. So Lynn, would you please come up? Thank you so much really appreciate the opportunity of being here and singing for you and this space that you're creating this morning. I thought I'd open with um, a song called Masterpiece Across the Sky. My path 
cattle dips and pulls I glide silently along The dark air filled with promise Poised for morning song The curtain rises slowly In the glow beyond the trees Paints the water around me Stirs me like a breeze The masterpiece across the sky will never, ever look this way again. The call of a lonely loon sings a haunting melody. that second verse again. The call of a lonely loon sings a haunting melody. The earth's alive with music, my heart beats in reverie. Steam out of the water, holy morning light. The glories of this morning, like a shadow calls my name. No two days will I ever be the same. sky will never the masterpiece across the sky will never never look this way again Ooh. thank you so much all right, I've been excited about uh, talking about this today and like putting the lesson together and then going back through it and then changing things and then I added something at 10.30 last night and um, because I don't have a social life and I'm not out on a Saturday night, except I wouldn't have been this Saturday anyway, but I'm generally home on Saturday nights. Uh, anyway, so first part that I wanna talk about is uh, Juneteenth, which is actually next Sunday. Um, and last year we recognized Juneteenth, and, you know, but it falls on the same day as Father's Day. And so you're trying to cram in a whole bunch of different stuff on the one day. And so I wanted to take one day because there's such a beautiful spiritual lesson for us in living our own lives today outside of just the historical story of what happened then that deserves like a real look and, and not just a look, but because it's a great kickstart for you know, flying ourselves, living our highest and best and happiest lives. So, do most of you, I'm gonna tell it anyway in case on the other end, but do, do any of you, many of you know the Juneteenth story? The, here's the basics of it. 
the Emancipation Proclamation was signed to free all people enslaved on January 1st of 19, of eight, 19, uh, um, 1863. But here's the thing. There was no uh, telephones or news broadcast. It then had to travel from community to community to community. Now, I, I read some stuff where people there on the East Coast, close to Washington, close to where, you know, it was all kickstarting off, they knew, and, and many of the people who had been enslaved gathered together in, in homes on December 31st that night because they celebrated at midnight and kicked off because that was their first moment of freedom. And then, and then the word started to travel. But for areas that were more controlled by the Confederacy, uh, it took a while to get the word out. So it wasn't until June 19th, 1865, two and a half years later, that uh, 2,000 troops rode into Galveston Bay, Texas, on the western side of Texas, and let those people know, hey, you're not slaves anymore, you're free. And so here's, the, and it's celebrated now. It's a, it's a second Independence Day. And I only heard of this story a few years ago myself, except people have been celebrating it since June 19th, 1865. And it's not just for the one group of people or the one race of people who had been being misused that got freed. It's a freedom for all of America that in, in it was a moment that we corrected ourselves and and then the lesson is when it gets claimed when it gets proclaimed it doesn't always kick in and so that's not only true of that one story it's true for our own lives it's true we talk we teach about affirmations and d denials and affirmations this is not true for me this is true for me and then we get mad when the next day we wake up and the checking account hadn't grown exponentially like we claimed that it would overnight magically, right? And because then you got to put some hands and feet to the feet um, to, uh, to it. So, you know, I mean, so these people were free for two and a half years when they couldn't exercise the freedom because they didn't consciously know about it. In this particular case, they just didn't know about it, right? They were living the life they, they knew. But you can't live, the lesson that we all get to walk away with in it is you can't go out and live something that you're, you don't know about. And, and maybe you've thought about it and maybe you've heard it said at church or you've heard it said by somebody you really trust or your favorite uh, influencer, you know, uh, or, you know, the Louise Hayes of the world or, or whoever, and you've heard it, but you've not, you're like, oh, well, that sounds good. Oh, well, that's probably true. Well, that doesn't work for me. Well, are you working it is the question. Cause it's the, the saying goes, it works if you work it right. And, you know, change your mind and change your life. So when you heard about it, did you test it out? Did you see how it might work for you? you know, what are you doing about it? Are you just thinking about it or are you putting it out into, the, are you claiming it and not accepting the other to be true? Like you may still have to show up. I had one job. I used to just lay my hand on the door as I was walking in saying, thank you, God. It for getting me through everything I need to do here today and thank you for the next job that is coming up after this one that's going to be even better and that was working for a big Hollywood producer that had produced the Matrix and, and the Lethal Weapon and all that stuff and uh, so that's supposed to be one of the places on the Warner Brother lot and that's supposed to be one of the places you wanted to get to right I'll tell you a trick on that I had just moved to LA I'm driving somewhere. I'm driving past the Warner Brothers lot because I was living with a friend in Burbank. And I said, I want to claim a job on the other side of that wall. That was not specific enough of a request because I ended up in probably one of the lowest paid jobs because he was one of those people that thought part of your payment was to get to say you worked for him. And um, anyway, God bless him. 
Um, he's doing very well, you know. But, uh, but there came, you know, I had to, I couldn't walk in saying, oh, God, I hate it here. I don't like this. I don't like this. I, all those things are true. I didn't like all those things. But if I spent my whole time thinking about that, I couldn't get out of it, right? So then the next question comes in, what is true for us? And here's a, a, a group of lessons that we talk about here a lot. But let's look at them and ask ourselves. It's not confession time. This is except to yourself, right? Of like how and when you actually use this as opposed to it just being something you've heard about and you've repeated it because we ask you to say it out loud, which is the unity basic principles, the five principles. So. Number one, there is only one ultimate power in the universe. That power is God and its nature is absolute, unchanging good. Little research, I found someone who tied Bible verses to each of the five. And so the one they give to that is Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 and 5, which says, Oh, hear ye, oh, hear, no, I'll get it right. Uh, hear, O oh, Israel. Israel is our illumined thoughts, right? So let light up our illumined thoughts. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, which is your endurance. Hang on to it in those moments when, when you realize you made the mistake and turned on the news at the wrong time that just wants to fill you with, here's every bad thing happening in the world. Because... There, here's the real challenge for us. It's a challenge for me. I'm guessing some of you come across it. You see stuff that you can't easily say, oh, there, well, there's good there. Like, nobody's going to say, well, that's a good thing that happened. But even trying to say, well, there's good there is a challenge. Except what we just said was there is only one ultimate power in the universe, and that power is God, and its nature is absolute unchanging good if we say that and believe it then in those moments of what do you think about this you just got to start looking because you have to say I see that I hear that I understand the emotions behind that and I still know that God is good all the time and that God is everywhere equally present so right here in this moment where you're trying to focus my attention on that. I'm sticking to, I'm going to help bring some good there by thinking about good. And that may mean just not thinking about that for the moment and finding some, some love, some peace, some joy, some whatever, until you can get to a place where you can be helpful. Cause in those moments, those people probably need some help. So they don't need you to, or us to completely ignore it. But if you can't look at it with an, an, an attempt with the intention to bring some good into it, you're not benefiting anybody to say, well, let me run out and help because this is awful and those poor things. They don't need you to add poor things to them. They're already there. They need the person that's gonna lift them up. And so that's where this principle comes in. And, and you know, we could pro I could turn the news on right now and within 30 seconds find something and be like, uh-uh, you know, right? But. We either believe it as a basic principle, basic truth for us or not. Number two, human beings were created from absolute good. And so our inherent nature is also good. We call the inherent goodness of human beings, the Christ. So Christ is not the last name of the man, Jesus, who used to live there. There is a Christ family, but it's one that we're all a part of too, because it's the God nature within us. So when I read human beings were created from absolute good, like that starts to feel like this, you know, very comforting affirmation, you know, from, I can stand a little bit taller cause I was created from absolute good. And it's like, yep. So was that person you was cussing about last week, you know, and, um, if you follow me on TikTok, I was cussing about some people last week, but, um, and if you don't like that, don't follow me on TikTok. Um, so, uh, anyway, but that came up 
Like I was complaining about somebody and I'm not giving him enough attention to tell his story, but I didn't like what he said. And I thought he endangered a large group of people and I cussed about it on TikTok. And then I ended with, we've got to find some love and some stuff. Da, da, da. And then some people challenged me. Oh, Mr. Minister, man, are you, how are you? Uh, did you find any love or are you just a hypocrite? And I'm like, no, yeah, there was a moment of anger that I don't apologize for. But the, the, the issue is never about whether we're mad, sad, glad, or ha it's about what do you do with it? Do you use it as a call to action? And when you go into action, are you carrying the anger forward or are you stopping and checking in on yourself and like, let me take my real true nature instead of the illusion is what the Course in Miracles calls all that other stuff. Instead of getting trapped in the illusion of the mad, let me check myself and say, yes, this made me mad because it needs some action. Now let me carry some love forward in this moment. Number three. Our thoughts are our creative power. Whatever we perceive. Oh, let me back up. The Bible verse to number two was John 14, 20, which says on the day you will realize that I am in the father. This is not Jesus, the man speaking. This is the Christ nature. That is that combination of the God within you, that power of God that is you saying, uh, you will realize I am in the father which is just our creator, the creator of all things. I am in the father and you are in me and I am in you. You are in the Christ and Christ is in you because that's the reality. That is what we call eternal life. You know, that we often like to just bring up at, at funerals, but like know it now, you always have been, you are now, you always will be because of the Christ that lives within you that you can use as often as you want, but it'll never force you to use it. Uh, so. Number three, our thoughts are our creative power. Whatever we persistently focus our thoughts and feelings upon manifest in our lives. The Bible verse says, Galatians, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, which means your thoughts matter. Again, you're going to have some moments where you're mad, sad, whatever. So, you know, it, it doesn't help to spend time on then being upset with yourself for being there. It's important, those moments are important to find out what's important to you in the moment. It's what you then do with it. Are you gonna then plant seeds to be helpful to yourself and others? And, and you can't help anybody else if you don't make sure you're not filled up first, right? If there's an emergency and everybody needs some water and you're the pitcher, you can't run around. If you don't stop at some point to keep the pitcher full, you run out and then you can't help anybody. So you got to make sure you're filled up and then you've got something to give. And in most of the time, if you keep yourself filled up, you don't even have to go have the human moment of giving because you staying filled up became an overflow that naturally gave to other people because you led by example. Number four. Prayer and meditation are essential elements of spiritual life because they focus our thoughts on our oneness with God and all creation. And now the Bible verse it gave for that is one of my faves because it's a great lesson. Oh, papers are sticking. Um, from Matthew 6, 6 says, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father, your creator. It, you can call it mother, father, God. Don't get caught up in the word if you don't like the word or the pronoun. Um, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. What that is saying is it goes on in another part of that scripture to say, if you're out doing your prayer and putting on your show on the street corner, then you have received your reward because your reward was the audience you were looking for when you went out and did it publicly and had to tell everybody about it. And when you're, we've talked about when we're working on manifesting our new ideas that sometimes you have to kind of keep that to yourself. Not like there's some step that you've messed up in, in your magic manifestation. It's simply saying that you have to protect it until it's got some legs and can walk, right? And so it's about taking that time to kind of keep it to yourself. Keep it for like 
the God in you and, and just talk that way, right? And then, and then see what you've got going there. Number five, it is not enough to know the truth. We must put that truth into action in our lives. We must live the truth we know. And that's ultimately what we're fully talking about today. We've got all this knowledge. I know everybody in here has been studying most of this for a fairly good time in some way or another, certainly at least just positive thinking, right? And so there's a lot of information and most of it's like a book on a shelf. It doesn't do any good until we pull it off and actually start doing something with it. So I invite you to find something in your life today that you can use this information on, that you can say, no, uh, they, uh, just like me, they are created from absolute good. I love them. I bless them. That doesn't mean I got to go be their best friend. I don't even have to hug them, but I got to love them and often from afar, but it's like, I've got to acknowledge that, that, like, I remember that statement from the Neil Donald Walsh book, The First Conversations with God, when he stirred up the world by saying, you know who else is one with God? Hitler. And people lost their minds. But it's either a true statement or it's not. Like, Hitler's one was one with God, too. Just didn't tap in all that much to the Christ mind, got caught up in the illusion of the human experience and thinking it had to be done that way. Now, the other part that I, um, oh, well, the Bible verse to that one, James uh, 2, 14 through 18 says, uh, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So that's that whole thoughts and prayers thing people talk about. And they say, thought, and then, you know, those people start saying thoughts and prayers don't work. Yes, they do. If they're actually put into action, they work really, really, really good. If they're actually used with intention and set out to actually do something with, but It doesn't benefit anybody by going and correcting the people that are saying that. You just take your own moment to say, I'm going to send up the thought and prayer and I'm sending out some love and I invite the knowledge to hit me of what it is I can do today to be helpful in this moment. Now, the other part that I I wanted to give you that I came across, there's an article that Catherine Ponder wrote for Unity Magazine in 1975 and the article was called Practical Christianity, It Works! Exclamation point. And five of the points that were brought up in there and, and, you know, that is a way a lot of people, I've had somebody recently say, well, unity is not Christian, is it? Yeah. It's a Bible based religion. We talk about Christ mind. I I had somebody in that same conversation say that I couldn't be uh, gay and a minister because I wouldn't follow in Christ and I wasn't a Christian. And I'm like, look, I, I follow the Jesus teachings. I follow the Christ teachings. I live in the Christ mind that makes me a Christian and I won't let somebody who treats that thought and those terms differently, take that power away from me. And so I invite you to hold on to it and use it too, because it's yours and can't anybody take it away from you except you. Now here's the five points that she said within that practical Christianity works because it gives us an understanding of the true nature of God and man. Practical Christianity works because it stands for redemption of the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. Practical Christianity works because it stands for the establishment of the kingdom of heaven upon the earth in our lives right here and now. Practical Christianity works because it brings increased prosperity into our lives. Practical Christianity works because it shows us how to pray in a simple way that brings results through the use of affirmative words followed by a meditative silence. Now, how do I use that information and tie it into what I started talking about with Juneteenth? 
Those people were free and they didn't know it for two and a half years. I started life out with people who had a different idea about religion and spirituality. And they told me that I was born a sinner and that I had to prove myself over and over. And there was nothing I could do about it. I was trapped in that because people who were older than me, seemingly trustworthy for me, all well-intentioned because that's what they thought was true and they, they thought that was the way to get to real life. And so I got trapped in that knowledge until I finally found my way out of it so that I could say, no, I am not like trapped into this. I'm a bad person that's always having to prove myself. I am inherently good. I am one with God because there is only one presence in the world. I'm a presence in the world. And, but we say that that one presence in the world, that power is God and its nature is absolute unchanging good. So that's true of you. That's something that many of us, probably not just me, had to break free of this one thought that really well-intentioned people, I want to be clear on that, gave that they were just wrong about. And then I finally found out this. It didn't suddenly become a new truth. It didn't get created when I found out about it. It had been true all along. I was just trapped in the thoughts of somebody that was mistaken. And so let yourself be free. If you feel held down, if you feel oppressed, you are whole, perfect, and complete. That is the truth of who you are. Know that. Live that because it is already true. I love you, I bless you, and I behold the Christ in you. Thank you. Now, in all my paperwork that I have up here, um, uh, we put in the handout of the mastermind prayer. This is a really cool thing to work and, you know, take time on that step six where you really want to claim something for yourself and then sit with it for a second sit with the thought of it allow yourself to see it as true and then also on this we put in a notes page in your bullet and on the back of the notes page are the five principles that we've talked about today many of you already know them but uh, things that we already know it's often very helpful to go back and look at again so now is our time for love offerings and tithes. We've started one new thing for people who give electronically. We've put this little card in because we want you to still be a part of the process when we're doing the collection of love offerings and tithes. So if you give virtually, we invite you to place this card in. If you haven't given virtually, but you want to start doing it that way, there's all the information of how you can do that on the card and you can hold on to it if you want. We have more of them upstairs, but we invite you to participate in that way. So whether you have your gift with you or you do it virtually, I invite you to place your hands on the gift or on your heart and let us say this prayer together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And I am grateful. And now, um, are, are you both, somebody's coming up to sing our new uh, offertory song and then uh, Charlotte will pray and then Lynn will bless us. And I'm gonna take my microphone and go sit back down in my corner. Thank you God for
wonderful, yes? We're really, really grateful and thankful. That's a beautiful, beautiful song. So when I think about this opportunity to give back for all the good that is in our lives and for the way that this ministry in particular nourishes us, I am constantly reminded of Karen Drucker's song. So I am so blessed. It goes, I am, you can say it with me if you like, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. So let us put a blessing upon these gifts that we have given in support of this ministry and see these offerings being used to bring our message of oneness and unity to an ever-expanding community. I invite you to hold up your hands, I see some of you are already doing that, and infuse this love offering with the energy of gratitude and love. We praise God for the unlimited wellspring of life, substance, and intelligence within us. We have faith that universal goodness is protecting us and guiding us. And as we joyfully give way to its flow, we transform our lives and co-create a prosperous spiritual community that blesses the world. And so it is. Amen. So the words are that you'll be able to sing if you choose. I got a foot stomping, doors wide open kind of love for you. And then foot stomping, doors wide open kind of love for you. Since my bio said something about blues, I thought I would infuse a little blues for you. I got a foot stomping, doors wide open kind of love for you. I do. I got And it's day three Stumbling around Rubbing my head But there's no liquor in my kitchen And none in my bed Won't you tell me What it is I've done To deserve this love To deserve this fun I got a foot stomping Doors wide open Kind of love For you I do I got a was looking right never has heard a word was the silent tight strumming seen around strumming my guitar singing the blues all alone in the bar won't you tell me what it is i've done to deserve this love to deserve this fun i got a foot stomping doors wide open kind of love for you I got a, a foot stomping doors wide open kind of love for you but don't think twice you better catch you a slice it's true hard as steel and soft as a cloud I could sing it to myself but I wear it proud yeah I shouted from the mountain top Nothing you could do to make me stop I got a, a foot stomping Doors wide open Kind of love for you I do I got a foot stomping Doors wide open Kind of love for you Don't think twice You better catch you a slice It's true so much. Appreciate it.
All right. So um, just reminders for this week. And run, tell it to everybody you can think of. You know, we're the church. Don't keep, don't keep this to yourself. Run, tell this. Uh, if, you, if you're in Charlotte's class and you think, oh, so-and-so who's also in knows, tell them anyway. This week is off because you don't want people showing up here and making the trip for unnecessarily. So no class, just this one Tuesday. And, uh, and then on Wednesday on Zoom, Anita's going to take us mentally to the ocean. So you don't want to miss that. And the Zoom information is on your bulletin on how to sign in for that. And, uh, and then next Sunday is Father's Day. What's that? There's sign-up sheets. And those sign-up sheets really, really help us a lot. And, uh, and I'm finding it helps you also remember what you wanted to come to. Yes? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, yes. So the picnic, which is two Sundays away, it's the last Sunday of June. It will, the, everything will be, so it's different than what we did last month. And we're going to, what we did last month, we're going to do again in July. But what is coming up is our annual homecoming picnic. So it's a great time to please invite people that you used to see here all the time you've not seen or bring somebody that, you know, you think really needs to hear what we do. So um, we're, it's at High Point City Lake Park, and that information, I think it's like Shelter 6 or 7, but that information is there. And so uh, we'll have service at 10 a.m. exactly like we always do, and then as soon as we're done with that, we'll go right into Eaton, because that's important. And, um, and then we're going to have some people that um, I haven't asked yet, Bobby and Suzanne, um, to help with drumming. And... Um, <laughs> And Linda and uh, with drumming. And um, so uh, and then there's going to be games. And then uh, Tao's fiance, who's the shaman that did the sound healing for us, she's going to do. And hers has money attached to it just to cover the expense of making the stuff. So, yeah, all that will happen um, two Sundays from now um, out at the park, High Point City Lake Park. Um, what's that? Yes, it's it, it it will be it should already be in the e blast. Uh, okay, we'll make sure there's more information in the e blast on it. Yeah. So, um, and then next week is Father's Day, and um, so we're going to look at the metaphysical lesson of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost because. Um, every man in this room has the father, the son in them. So does every woman. So does every other binary person. So does every human being. So does every living being. So we're going to talk about that. And then Nancy Pitkin will be here uh, as our musician. So uh, if Nancy can drive in from the other side of Raleigh, you all can come here and support her. So, um, all right. We're going to bring up and do the peace song and, and uh, the, the prayer for protection. And as soon as we're done, I'm leaving. So I'm not talking to anybody today to keep my distance. If you need to talk to me, ask me something, share something, call. you can call me, text me, email me, Zoom me. If you don't have the number, ask somebody here. Several people have it in their cell phones. I love you. I bless you. I behold the Christ in you. And let's sing together. Will y'all sing?
the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well.